Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. And You know, I think we've been bringing this program to the good people of Sheboygan County for nearly 20 years. And every month we strive to focus on a different department, different programs and services. And this month, we are so pleased that Kayla Clinton is with us, our new or relatively new Rocky Hill Administrator. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you for having me. Kayla started in September, had a brief transition with our former Rocky Knoll Administrator, Rochelle Valeski, and hit the ground running. We are just so pleased that Kayla's here. Good things are happening at Rocky Knoll. And, and let's just start with a little bit of background about yourself, Kayla. Please share a little bit about your background and uh, your experience in the healthcare area. Sure. Um, well, Sheboygan County has been my home for a little over three years now. Um, I grew up in South Texas, um, but I've been in Wisconsin. I finished high school and college in Wisconsin. Uh, I studied political science and public administration. Um, I've been in long-term care for six years. I've been the administrator um, at skilled nursing facilities in the Madison and Milwaukee areas. And then prior to coming to Rocky Knoll, I was at a skilled nursing facility in Sheboygan. So you, I was able to be at the former skilled nursing home that you were at just to check you out a little bit, check out the facility, and, and, and all was positive. And so, again, we're so pleased that you're now working for Rocky Knoll. What was your first impression of Rocky Knoll? I think one of the first things that stuck out about Rocky Knoll was that it had an actual campus. 62 acres um, is what Rocky Knoll is sitting on, and it's incredibly beautiful. Um, it's a rural setting, but just the mixture of woods and countryside um, made it a wonderful first impression with a beautiful setting. Um, as far as the exterior, um, I really like the brick. I like how um, the arcades or the arches were kept from um, the original building and then um, even after a few renovations they were able to, to keep that. Um, as far as the interior of the building, um, there's a lot of space. It's much bigger than some of the other facilities I've been at, so there's ample space for private rooms and activities and different events, as um, well as a lot of other um, wonderful living space for, for the residents and staff. It is a beautiful facility, and we're so fortunate that the Sheboygan County Board continues to support Rocky Knoll. When I started nearly 20 years ago, we had three facilities, the Comprehensive Health Care Center, Sunny Ridge, and now Rocky Knoll, and, and it's just a beautiful facility. And the most important thing, of course, is the quality of care that we provide. And what have your impressions been there? How is Rocky Knoll doing in that regard? Sure. Um, I would say the reputation of, of Rocky Knoll is, is incredibly strong and the quality of care is something that um, a lot of people know and recognize uh, Rocky Knoll for. My first impression and first exposure to Rocky Knoll was back in 2012 um, when they had piloted the Music and Memory program for people with dementia. And Rocky Knoll was one of the first facilities that was seeing positive results from um, creating playlists that um, would bring back memories to those with dementia. So um, from the very beginning, just hearing of Rocky Knoll, the, the quality of care, the innovation um, was something that Rocky Knoll was um, being known for. Yeah, and I've personally had family members live and pass away there. In fact, one of my distant cousins, I think, was what was the oldest male resident to ever live and pass away at Rocky Knoll, and it just has such a such a good uh, reputation in the community. And as people make those decisions, you know, we hope as we go through life that one day, uh, you know. If, if things go as planned, we'll be working with our loved ones and possibly looking for a good skilled care facility. And how do people make those decisions? I, I, I know one of the methods is to go online and look at some state survey results. Mm -hmm. Um, we recently regained our five-star quality rating from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid. Um, that's a, a quick tool that you can use that compares the quality of nursing homes. Um, it's measured, there's a, um, a couple of different measures from staffing to quality measures to how facilities have performed on um, annual inspections that determine that five-star rating. I think in our community, a lot of it is word of mouth. People choose our facility because they have had um, neighbors, family members, or loved ones that have been um, 
at that facility and have had positive experiences. So it's, it's a combination. It's also um, specific services, different skilled nursing facilities specialize in different areas. Um, and then the setting too. Um, a lot of times it's nice to be closer to family, but um, we've also had people choose Rocky Knoll because of the beautiful setting. Years ago, I used to hear some people say, well, I live in Sheboygan. I can't make that long drive out to Plymouth. Mm -hmm. But uh, from a standpoint of quality of care, doctor referrals, word of mouth, mm -hmm. and just, as you said, the beautiful setting nestled into the hillside there and surrounded by woods. And mm -hmm. it's not unusual to see deer or turkeys uh, pass mm -hmm. through that area. It, it's just a very nice place to take a loved one. I'm proud that the county owns and operates it. And you mentioned earlier, you know, that quality of care and how we now have five stars, which is the highest rating the state surveyors can provide. A big reason for that is the outstanding employees we have. And my understanding is we have an experienced workforce. Mm -hmm. We have about 200 employees, and there's a lot of tenure and longevity in our employees. Um, one of my first impressions with the staff is I was amazed how many people have been there, 20, 30, 35 years of experience. So um, it's a tribute to Sheboygan County, as well as those committed individuals um, who are there doing a great job um, to achieve that quality that we have helps when they know their residents because some of them mm -hmm. do live there for quite some time. They certainly call it home. Mm -hmm. So it's been about six months now on the job. What would you consider to be one or more of your greatest challenges uh, working at Rocky Knoll? I think the biggest challenge uh, entering any new facility is learning the systems, the policies, um, just the day-to-day -day activities and how it uh, might be different from where um, I came from. I think that's one of the biggest challenges as well as um, this year, starting in 2016, um, the regulations that um, skilled nursing facilities follow were updated. Um, the, the mega rules is something that all skilled nursing facilities that receive federal uh, money have to implement. So it's over 600 pages of revised regulations, new regulations. Um, we are implementing an emergency preparedness plan. So because I came in in the middle of phase two of all these new regulations, it's not only learning the Rocky Knoll policies and procedures, it's also updating and implementing and training to making sure that we are in compliance with these new regulations. So that's kind of my, been my biggest challenge on the forefront coming in. And as you think about that challenge and maybe that leads to one of the goals for the, the year ahead, what, do you, what are some of the key projects or accomplishments you hope to achieve in the first year? Mm -hmm. I think that compliance is, is the biggest one. We have our annual survey coming up um, in, I would say, the next five, six months. So we have a little bit of time. Um, something that we just recently did was we expanded the, our memory care unit. We added nine beds um, to our memory care unit, which is based on a community need. We were seeing um, that the people were looking for places um, to put their loved ones and um, there aren't a whole lot of dementia beds available right now in our community. So we were able to expand our memory care unit and be able to fill those beds almost immediately. Um, another focus, like I said, was the emergency preparedness. Some of the recent events just throughout our nation have really um, put a spotlight on making sure that um, healthcare facilities are prepared for um, man-made or natural disasters. So in collaboration with public health and emergency preparedness, um, that's a goal of mine is to make sure that we are well equipped to be prepared for any type of situation. Excellent. Well, you certainly hit the ground running and I can't recall a, a smoother transition. It's just been so seamless, Kayla. So we're, we're just so pleased you're here. Tom. Thank you, thank you Adam. Hi, Kayla. Hi. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, as you know, most uh, counties do not operate a, uh, a healthcare facility like we do in, in Wisconsin. What do you think are some of the advantages and disadvantages of us operating, of Sheboygan County operating a uh, healthcare center like Rocky Knoll? I think some of the biggest advantages um, are the resources, the county resources. Um, Rocky Knoll is successful because we're also supported by HR, finance, purchasing, IT. Um, so I think being able to have that level of expertise across all of those areas um, helps make 
Rocky Knoll successful and county facilities successful. Um, I think maybe a disadvantage um, because there's a lot of checks and balances and accountability and oversight, there are some processes that do take a little bit longer, sure. um, which could be one advantage. But like I said, it's, it's for that protection and oversight. Um, but just some of my initial impressions of, of the county run facility, mm -hmm. um, those resources are incredibly helpful. And if you do have a question, um, it's very easy to just call a brother or sister in the county and, and get what you need. Yeah, well, good. Um, to what extent do you think the county can compete with the private sector in this area? Mm -hmm. um, I've worked in for-profit and non-profit um, companies in long-term care and um, there's a lot of similarities when it comes to, to running your business and we always say um, we're in the business of, of people and helping people um, but there is that business aspect that you have to maintain in order to continue to care for those people because uh, regulations primarily dictate how we provide care, um, it, it doesn't necessarily matter whether it's county run or for profit. We all have those same regulations because we're receiving federal money um, from Medicare and Medicaid. So from that aspect, we can compete just as easily with um, the private sector um, because of those regulations and those reimbursement from, from the federal government. Um, what are some of the different services that we provide and what do you think Rocky Knoll stands out in if you had to pick one or two? Sure. Uh, Rocky Knoll has five distinct units. We're a larger facility. We're licensed for 149 beds. Um, we have our specific dementia unit, so we have specialized programming um, for those with Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, we also have a behavioral unit or psychiatric care that we provide, um, which also might be different than other skilled nursing facilities. And then we have our short-term rehab unit, so your hips, knees, um, ortho, um, we're able to do rehab, rehabilitation for those individuals to, to go home. Um, our other two units are um, kind of your traditional long-term care. Um, there are clinical needs, but um, we do have two units that um, are able to accommodate someone who might need nursing care, whether it be 24 hours or just the occasional um, assistance. I would say what stands out for Rocky Knoll is we do have some specialized services um, in addition to those five distinct units. We have um, a TB room, it's a negative pressure room, which is fairly unique and you don't see a whole lot of, um, that allows us to um, take someone or treat someone who has active tuberculosis or a highly contagious respiratory illness. Um, we also can accommodate um, bariatric people, um, so we have all of that equipment to be able to accommodate those needs as well. Yeah. And Tom, if I can interject, sure. my, my grandfather actually was at Rocky Knoll when at one point it was built as a TB center mm -hmm. you know, way back in the day. And fortunately, he was able to come out of that. Uh, my mother recently was at Rocky Knoll recently, a couple of years ago, for in the recovery area, mm -hmm. rehab for a double knee surgery. And my mom's a former school teacher and pleasant yet tough. And I was really interested in hearing her feedback about the facility because I knew she wouldn't pull any punches. And mm -hmm. she was very positive about the staff there, the, the quality of care, the food. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's really improved over the last few years in particular. I've heard wonderful things about the food there, but that just warmed my heart that uh, she was taken such good care of and really felt good about the facility. So it, it really is a full service facility mm -hmm. serving a lot of needs in this community. You know, I would agree with that. I live in the city of Plymouth, so it's not that far from Rocky Knoll, and I certainly hear, hear people because they're even volunteers who go out there to help out, you mm -hmm. know, they're close by, and I hear many positive things uh, frequently sure. about Rocky Knoll. So I, you mentioned that we have, a, uh, I think, 144 beds is what we're licensed for, is that correct? 149. 149. Mm -hmm. And how many uh, patients or residents do we have right now? We're currently at 134 residents, so about 90% occupancy. Excellent. And how does that, a 90% occupancy, is there any standard relative to, to that? Maybe not, but uh, that does matter. 
uh, how mm -hmm. many people we have. Uh, occupancy there. definitely matters. Um, because skilled nursing facilities pay a bed tax for each bed, um, the occupancy is very important just as you, you manage your business. So um, there are opportunities if you aren't able to operate at a higher occupancy rate it, to delicense um, some of those beds. But in our case, um, I know we, we have begun that process. We've settled at 149, and because we've been able to um, run consistently high, um, that's been a good a good number for us. And that helps the bottom line at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? Um, what is your total budget and how have, you, how have you been performing, how have they been performing in the last five years? Sure, our budget is $13 million, a little over $13 million. Um, over the last five years, I would say Rocky Knoll has been heading in the right direction with their budget. Um, each year we try to reduce the, the tax levy, that's always our focus, um, and to be good stewards of, of tax dollars that we receive. Um, from last year to this year, we've reduced the tax levy by 27%. So going into 2018, we're hoping to use and have budgeted to use 600 and about $640,000 um, of the tax levy. Which is substantially less than it was 10 and 15 years ago, right, Adam? It's Correct. remarkable. In, in 2007, when we owned two facilities, Sunny Ridge and Rocky Knoll, the tax levy subsidy to operate these two nursing homes was $6.1 million. So if you can imagine of a, about a $45 million total tax levy, 6.1 million going to help support or subsidize, subsidize two nursing homes that we don't even have to be in that line of work. Mm -hmm. So it was one of the reasons why the county board took the initiative that it did to privatize Sunny Ridge. And then thankfully, thanks to excellent management, good mm -hmm. teamwork, and perhaps some good fortune as well, we've been able to reduce that tax subsidy from 6.1 million to closer to 600,000, and it's mm -hmm. heading in the right direction. So it's a real compliment to everyone involved at Rocky Knoll. Thank you. So, so speaking of good things, and, and what a nice transition that is. I mean, there are probably viewers years ago who can remember when Sheboygan County owned and operated three facilities. We had more beds than any county in the state it was difficult, it was a trying time for the county board to, to close the comprehensive health care center, which was a grand old facility, served our community well, but it was just time. And we uh, closed comprehensive and put a $10 million addition on Rocky Knoll. Years later, regulations changed and now that area is where our rehab mm -hmm. uh, residents predominantly reside. So change is always happening in the healthcare center industries. It's just remarkable. Mm -hmm. And please touch on that a little bit, frame that for our viewers that, you know, all of this ongoing change in regulation, it has to make it challenging for not only you as a leader of that organization, but all your staff, everyone involved. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say that our environment, even in the last five years, has changed tremendously. Um, like I said, with the mega rules, we now have updated rules and regulations. Um, prior to this update, there hadn't been any updates or changes since 1991 in those regulations. Um, I would say the, the culture and um, just the perception of, of long-term care has, has changed over time. Um, there's, there was more of a focus to, to keep people out of skilled nursing facilities or the institutional setting to um, even at the state level to pr provide more funds um, to allow people to stay at home longer and that's always our goal as well. Um, but it just it gets to that time where um, someone or a family isn't able to, to keep their loved one at home based on their clinical needs. Um, so I would say that mentality as far as um, allowing people or wanting people and prioritizing people to stay at home um, was kind of a big, a big shift. And so our patient population has changed with those changes and regulations. Um, we see by the time we see people in our setting, um, their clinical needs are higher. Um, and also a lot of times um, personal funds have, have been spent down. So um, we do see a lot of our Medicaid population and we provide for, for that population. Um, so it's just those trends and um, the, the philosophy and then our patient population um, is what has changed. With that though, 
the goal and our regulations, they want it to be person-centered. They want it to be home-like. Um, a lot of just kind of those, the details and the minutia of what's in that regulations doesn't necessarily allow us to, to meet that type of needs with the reimbursement that we're getting. And so um, as the regulations change, as we continue to focus on quality care, person-centered care, it does make it um, very difficult to balance all of those needs. Incredibly challenging as I think of you know this evolution. You know, I think it's the right direction. Who among us doesn't want to stay home as long as possible, or who among us doesn't prefer to go to an assisted living facility or something where you you get some help, yet it's not a traditional nursing home until ultimately you have to go to that nursing home and get that skilled care. I, I think those types of alternatives for people is, is really beneficial. But as you said, it definitely put a strain on nursing homes' ability to maintain a census, maintain a budget, mm -hmm. and we've adjusted accordingly. In fact, Rocky Noel used to have a, about 200 beds, and now, right. as you said, it's 149. They used to be shared. Now they're all private, mm -hmm. right? They're all individual, which yes. is nice. But as you look forward in your crystal ball, Kayla, five years out, what do you think Rocky Knoll and Sheboygan County has to do to continue to position our nursing home for success? I think we always have to be creative. We always have to be budget conscience, conscious. And I think that we are positioned well to continue um, going in the future. Um, with that creativity though, I think it's always beneficial to look for creative streams of, of revenue. Um, we manage our expenditure very well, but there comes a point where we still have to provide that care. We still need to, to meet those needs. And there are some costs that um, aren't controllable, um, like drug costs. We don't control those necessarily, but we have to provide what um, the doctor has prescribed. Um, so I think finding and being open to, to those efficiencies, um, we're always looking at ways we can be more efficient but still provide that quality of care. Um, that will be essential to the future of our success. Um, I also think, too, just, just being creative. We've looked at um, an assisted living option. We've looked at kind of what, what we can do to um, make up for, for those gaps where we are um, seeing, seeing the loss in our reimbursement and then the cost of providing that care. Um, so I hope in the next five years I don't have that crystal ball per se, but um, we continue to, to be open and look for, for alternate ways we can make up um, in those areas. And I know in the food service area and how meals are provided, there's been a number of changes to, to make it feel more like home and mm -hmm. allow for more individual choices. Well, one of the other challenges that you're certainly facing, we're all facing, and I think most employees are facing, are staffing shortages. Mm -hmm. And my wife's a registered nurse, Kayla knows, I, I just think the world of that profession and the people who provide that care takes special, remarkable people, mm -hmm. I think, to work at nursing home facilities and provide that important care. And CNAs in particular are providing hands-on care, and you generally work as a CNA before you come, become a nurse. Mm -hmm. We're struggling, as most nursing homes, I think, if not all nursing homes, are struggling to find people. What's happening there? Um, yes, so the, the certified nursing assistant or the CNA um, workforce shortage is um, a huge priority um, across the state. Um, some of the reimbursement rates uh, attribute to um, not being able to increase compensation. Um, so individually, we, we do have a plan uh, in how we recruit. Um, a lot of it are forces outside of our control. Um, Sheboygan County is very fortunate to have already a very low unemployment rate as well as ample jobs for people to choose from. So it is a blessing and a curse in that standpoint. Um, but ultimately, um, we're involved. Um, we're a clinical site um, with LTC for nurses as well as certified nursing assistants. So we just want to give people, we're looking for the right people with that caring and compassionate heart um, to, to do the job. So we want to make sure we get the right people. But um, with all of the options and then competitive wages, um, we are seeing that there, there is a, a drastic need for, for certified nursing assistants. Good CNAs certainly earn every dollar that comes mm -hmm. their way. It's not a real high paying wage, but uh, very important work. Mm -hmm. And the one nice thing, you know, if, if you happen to be watching this and you are a CNA or looking to go into that area, as you said, we provide training at the facility. And one of the 
upsides of working for a county owned and operated facility are the benefits are stronger. Mm -hmm. It's a stronger benefit package. Usually the wages are pretty similar to the nonprofit or private sector, but our benefits are a little stronger. Though, as you know, Kayla, a lot of young folks aren't necessarily that enthusiastic or care as much about the benefits. They're right. looking at that dollar. But if you're planning on being in the profession for a while, uh, Rocky Knoll is a great place to work and a great mm -hmm. place to provide quality care. We only have a few minutes left, but we also have a Rocky Knoll Foundation, and I know they're helping make good things happen at Rocky Knoll. Please touch mm -hmm. on that. Sure. Um, one of the other advantages of a county-run facility is we have the county and community support, and um, that's reflective in um, things like the Women's Auxiliary and the Rocky Knoll Foundation. Um, so their single focus is to pro provide life enriching services and activities and uh, material items for our residents that is separate from our budget. So they have been an instrumental um, in providing activities and equipment for things like our music and memory program, our iPod shuffles. Um, they have been responsible for some small construction projects like our bistro outside, which is a, a fire pit and grill. So in the summer when we have outdoor music, we can also um, kind of have a cookout, which is wonderful. Um, so their support has just been um, incredibly helpful in enriching the lives of our residents. And we're very grateful to have the some foundation. Of, some of our viewers are probably thinking, Bistro, you have a Bistro <laughs> at Rocky Knoll? You're darn right we do. We have mm -hmm. a beautiful area for residents and family members to come and cook out or grill out if they want. And again, that foundation has been instrumental in helping raise funds and and we won't name names, but there are some major companies in this community and in the Plymouth area that have been yes. very generous in uh, providing amenities at Rocky Knoll that have mm -hmm. been good for both the residents and the staff. So it's wonderful what that foundation has done. Uh, so final question. So folks might want to get involved. Tom t talked about it earlier. We have all these wonderful volunteers that come out to Rocky Knoll and provide assistance. How, if someone wants to volunteer at Rocky Knoll, what are some of the things they can do? How do they contact you for more information? Sure. I think the best way if, if someone is looking to make a positive impact is, is to just give the gift of your time. There's no need for any special talents or services. Um, I would say that all of our residents, they, they just love the one-on-one, the, -on -one, the personal conversation, the personal touch. Um, we do have kind of established avenues for our volunteers. Our life enrichment director um, is the one that coordinates the volunteers, but um, it doesn't have to be formal. If you're only looking to, to pop in and, and say, hello, then, then that's a blessing to, to us and our residents, and we're grateful for that. Um, if you do have a specific um, gift or, or talent that you want to share, um, I think the best way is just to, to reach out to Life Enrichment and, and get something set up, but um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't take much, and we appreciate anyone who's just willing to pop in and say hello. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being our guest today. Kayla covered a lot of ground. If you have any further questions about Rocky Knoll or want to learn more, don't hesitate to reach out to Kayla or a member of her staff. We have a county website where more information can be found. And, and again, Kayla, it's just really wonderful to have you part of our county family and the good work you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you, having Kayla. me. Next month, we're going to talk about another area of county government that also touches on state government, and that's UW Extension, which is now co-located here with UW Sheboygan. And there's been a lot of changes at the state level, as you may have heard or read, with consolidation of UW Sheboygan with UW Green Bay, consolidation of extension with the university system, and Cindy Sarkady, our new regional department head overseeing the extension offices, is going to be with us to share more about what's happening with extension and the very good work that extension and all the volunteers do. So until then, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next month.